So we're going to start with um, with Pat's story, and uh, I'll leave this up for a minute. But then what I might do is make the screen bigger so that we can see her face, um, and that way I can also let people in if they're coming in. But I wanted Pat, if you can begin with maybe this card or this image, and then um, I'll stop the share and so we could see your face. So you see a tarot card there, the fool, which is at the very beginning of the 78 card deck. And it's, the, it's, it's labeled zero because it's prior to actually entering this new part of the story. The, the fool is ready to take a step forward, uh, even though it looks as though he's going to step off the edge of a cliff because he's, he has this uh, willingness to trust and surrender to the to what he's being drawn to, and and uh, and as Ray Bradbury says, you've got to jump off the cliff all the time and build your wings on the way down. And um, so, as I was uh, saying in the, uh, the my definition of becoming, it really is a process of allowing the stripping away of all the things that prevent you from becoming, and that is all the fears, uh, fear of conflict, fear of obstacles and challenges, and fear of, of uncertainty, and, and fear of not being safe. And uh, so like the fool, where you have to jump off the cliff, right? So, so I, I see everything in terms of uh, a story. Everything to me is a story. The fool is a, a symbolic image of who we are all the time, taking a step every day. So um, as we go along in this, I'm sure we'll have a number of themes that will come up uh, through the various times that we meet in which I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn it into a story. So get ready, <laughs> that's gonna happen. <laughs> so. Anyway, that's, that's why that image of that tarot card is there, is how I see it. Yes, okay. Yes, by the way, for those of you that don't know me, I'm the one that's Christina's mom. And um, my sis and, the, and Pat is, is actually my real sister. So that's our relationship. And it's been a very strong relationship most of our lives, actually all of our lives. Um, Pat was my elder sister talking about story, which is Pat's, uh, she just loves story. Well, Pat and I have the, the story of two sisters growing up in a family of nine siblings, Pat and I being the oldest of the sisters, and Pat was always my protector. So if you look at story in the terms of myth or archetype, my sister, Pat, my older sister by 13 months, <laughs> was my hero. She was my protector, uh, and uh, she took care of me. And um, so I, that's one of our connections in life. Now, um, my, my story, my life, uh, my purpose has, has been, my, and my passion has been language. And uh, language uh, has, has given me, um, as Ray Bradbury talks about wings, we need to develop those wings as we are risking our, our choices in life. It has been language that, that has also been my wings. And um, I love to share story. I love to share poetry. I love to uh, write, and this has always been a part of who I am. So I'd like to read to you um, what Toni Morrison says about language. Tell us what the world has been to you in the dark places and in the light. Don't tell us what to believe or what to fear. Show us belief's wide skirt and the stitch that unravels fear's call. Speak the language that tells us 
only what language can, how to see without pictures. Language alone protects us from the scariness of things with no names. Language makes meaning that secures our difference, our human difference. The way in which we are like no other life, language alone is meditation. Word, word work is sublime because it is generative. We do language and that may be the measure of our lives. So as we continue this process of sharing my sister Pat and my daughter Christina and with, with ourselves and with you, you're going to probably hear from me a lot about language, a lot about words, uh, poetry, uh, because that's what I love to share. That's, what, that's part of who I am and I love to share it. So that's my story. Okay, thank you. And my name is Cristina. I said that before, but for those who just joined us, so good to see everyone. Um, although I can't see you right now, I see just my screen, but pretty soon we'll have it on gallery view and um, I'll be able to see everybody's faces. But it's so good to see all of you, to have you here at, in this space. And so um, my, what I hope to bring to this space is just an overall sense of different ways to understand healing. Um, I have been on a journey of healing. So my purpose, um, since I was very small actually, has, um, I mean, I, me I remember as a child, just want, spending hours outside in the garden and with um, small animals, like even, even insects and just wanting to bring love. And um, if I saw a, an injured animal, um, a small animal, like I would want to breathe healing into it. And I remember talking to the plants and I remember talking to the trees and to the wind and asking them to bring healing to these little animals that I, even if they were like a little ant or whatever, like I felt that healing was a part of my um, essence. And I haven't always been attuned to that. Um, it's what Pat was saying, like we sometimes have been, there's a seed of our essence like an acorn that we are born with. And that acorn wants to grow into that strong oak. And sometimes we are the ones that forget to water the seed and we forget to give it, you know, tend to the soil and give it nutrients. And I have been one of those people that has forgotten um, the seed within myself. Um, and I've, and the universe has responded in my life to that by illness. And so I've had serious illness in my life, but I see it as a teacher and I see it as a way for me to understand that what are the ways in which this illness is showing up so that I can understand uh, how I need to attend and tend to myself once again. So part of my journey here is to bring about this idea that healing isn't just um, our archetypal ideology of healing, which is you have a healer, you have the person who needs to be healed, and someone like it's curative, like um, almost a doctor-patient relationship. I see healing as a co-generative process where two people um, come into agreement. You have the person coming in who needs healing, who says, I am here, not because I need to be healed by you, but because I am willing and open to receive healing. And the other person saying, I'm not the expert in your healing, you're the expert in your healing, but I'm here to bear witness and to be here with you so that we can mend and build together, um, reconstruct in some ways, um, or even reimagine who you want to be and how this illness, and what are the things this illness is teaching you. And so a lot of what I'm going to be talking about is the importance in my life of aligning my mind, body, and spirit connection. Because when I um, am aware that I am aligning my thoughts and my words with my actions, then it's what bell hooks um, 
and she she's a um, a black author, woman author, who's really someone who has had a, a huge effect on me in education. Um, but she talks about even in educational spaces this idea of self actualization, and it's that um, alignment of who we say we are and what we're doing and having that match, even when we're home at, at, alone in our own spaces, even by ourselves and no one's watching us, are we being in alignment with who we want to be out there in the world and how we present ourselves? And um, part of that is back to tending to ourself, nurturing that acorn, that beautiful um, potential within ourselves that wants to burst through the soil and grow. Um, so a lot of what I'll bring is around the understanding of healing and ways that we can maybe reconceptualize what healing is. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna move on to the next slide here and we have some prompts. I'll leave this on the screen just for a sec, um, but I'm gonna stop the recording as well in just a minute. But I wanted us to think maybe now, and we don't have to, it's not about a linear, <laughs> this is not linear where we have to answer questions in a certain way. We're not back in school. This is just an organic conversation. But we really want to understand how all of you are thinking about purpose and maybe what becoming, who you are, and, um, who, and who you have become and how you feel about that process and what brings you joy in that process. So uh, that's, those are some of the things that we're gonna be asking you to think about right now. And maybe we could just take um, the next 30 seconds to just uh, kind of go into ourselves and think about these questions and also think about what has just been said and ways that you might want to participate in this conversation and share. So I'm gonna just give ourselves like a few more seconds to just think and reflect and then we'll um and then we'll open it up to conversation. Mm -hmm. 